Okay, so my objects are now 3D layers and we're able to manipulate and move these within 3D space, but they still look pretty flat. How do I give them depth and make them look more like 3D objects rather than flat planes? Well, if we take a look up here to the top right, we can see something that wasn't there earlier called Renderer. This only became available when we'd converted our objects into 3D layers. By default, the renderer is set to Classic 3D, but if we click this, it'll open the Composition Settings window, and from the Renderer drop-down, we can select another renderer, either Ray Trace Renderer or Cinema 4D. If I select Cinema 4D, we can see that a bunch of options have been enabled, such as the ability to extrude and bevel text and shapes, and reflections, and so on. But be aware of some of the functions that will be disabled if we use this renderer. So remember when we add the color overlay uh, layer style to change the color of the game controller icon? Well, using Cinema 4D renderer will disable such options. So bear that in mind. We could choose the ray trace renderer as it also allows us to extrude text and shapes and so on, but the Cinema 4D renderer is far newer, has more options and performs better than the ray trace renderer. So with the Cinema 4D renderer selected, I'll click OK. And there we can see that the colour overlay has disappeared from the game controller icon as it has reverted back to its original colour. If I head over to my text layer, I'll just collapse the transform options. We can see that we have a couple of new things here. Geometry options and material options. And we'll use these to extrude our text and add a material. So the material will basically control things such as how shiny and reflective the text is. So I'll start with the geometry options, toggle this down and start tweaking some values. So one of the things I want to do first is increase the extrusion depth. A lot of the time, tweaking these values will likely be a case of trial and error until you're happy with the results. So I think an extrusion depth of 45 may work well for this text, but I can always change this later if I'm not happy. So I'm just going to zoom into the comp work area for a closer look, and you can do this by placing your cursor over the area and using the middle wheel on your mouse to zoom in or out. Or you can use the magnification drop down at the bottom here to choose a zoom percentage or zoom back out to fit the whole area again. So we can see here that although the text has indeed been extruded and looks somewhat 3D, it does look a little strange. And this is because there are no lights in the scene to add shadows or highlights. So what we're seeing here is nothing more than the flat colour. So to create a light, I'll head up to Layers, New, Light. This will open the light settings, and we can make some changes, but for now I'll just leave things the way they are, and leave it as Spotlight, and click OK. And you can see that immediately this has made a difference to our 3D text, Add in highlights and shadows to make things really pop and stand out. So I'll just zoom in a little bit and move the work area down by holding the space bar on the keyboard and then dragging the work area. And I can see the spotlight that I've just created. So moving the position of the light can dramatically change the look of things. And we can change the position by either hitting P on the keyboard with the light layer selected to open the position values and then tweaking things. Or maybe grabbing one of the X, Y or Z handles 
on the actual light within the comp work area and moving it. So now that we can see the details of the 3D text, I don't really like how the front of the text looks super flat with these really sharp edges. I can fix this by heading back down to the geometry options and tweaking the bevel settings. First I'm going to change the bevel style to angular. And next I'll adjust the bevel depth value until I'm happy with it. So I think this is a little bit too much bevel. So I want it to be quite subtle, so I'll just bring this value down quite low. So I think I'm done with the geometry options for the time being, so I'll close this and go ahead and take a look at material options. So let's take a look at this. I think I want the text to cast shadows, so I'll switch this to on. And I'll just go through these settings, tweaking things to see how they look. So I want my text to be shiny, so I'll increase the specular shininess, as this will help with this. I want my text to be slightly reflective, but not as reflective as a mirror. So I'll increase the reflection intensity value slightly. And what I'm noticing is the more shiny and reflective the material is, the darker my text is looking. And the reason for this is that my environment, or the 3D space, is black. If I hide my background layer for a second by unchecking the eye icon to the right of the background layer, we can see that everything is black. So what is happening here is that the more reflective and shiny we make the text material, the more it's reflecting nothing much more than the black background, making our text appear dark grey. So what we can do here is to fake a more interesting environment just to create some reflections for our objects. And we can do this by creating a reflection map. Simply adding a photo to the scene. Right click on the photo layer and select environment. The photo won't be visible in the scene, rather reflections of it will be seen in any reflective objects. It may take a second or two to render the preview as indicated by this blue bar. And something to keep in mind is that the more reflection, shadows, lights and so on in your scene, then the longer things will take to render or preview when you make any changes. But we'll cover this more later, along with tips on how we can speed up previews and renders. So I'm not entirely happy with the reflections from this image, so I'm going to swap it for a different image. I don't need to delete the image from the layer and create a new one, uh, what I can do instead is select the image from the project pane and while holding the Alt key on my keyboard, I can drag it down on top of the layer of the original image and this will swap it out with the new image. So I think this is looking far better. The reflections from the new image give my text a more metallic look. As I mentioned earlier, there's no exact science to the material settings, it really is just a case of going back and forth, tweaking the values until you're happy with the results. So I'll go ahead and do the same for the border shape. Under geometry options, I'll extrude and change the bevel style to angular. In material options, I'll tweak the values as I did with the text. A specular shininess of 50, and reflection intensity of 15 this time, as I feel that a value of 20 was a little bit much for the text. So just looking at the text again, I'm thinking that perhaps the reflections are a little much. Uh, if you think of a nice shiny reflective stage, for example, You'll notice that the reflections of objects and lights aren't super sharp and clear. Well, not unless the stage is some kind of super reflective mirror. And you'll notice that the reflections are sharper the closer the objects are to the stage, but become more blurred and faint the further away the objects are. I can replicate this effect by dampening down some of my reflections a little, by adjusting things such as 
the reflection sharpness value to blur the reflection slightly so that they don't look too sharp and unrealistic. And I can also adjust the reflection roll off values to make my reflections fade slightly the further away they are. So again, this is just a case of trial and error, tweaking the values until you're happy with the results. And I can continue tweaking the rotation and position of the null object, which in turn will control the camera, which is linked to the null object, until I'm happy with how things are looking. Well, that brings us to the end of this short tutorial, and I really hope you can take something away from this. Uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, you may be interested in taking part in my course 3D Motion Graphics and Introduction. Thank you very much for watching, remember to hit the subscribe button for more free tutorials and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.